This motherboard caught my attention. First, the brand, Soyo. Look at that. I haven't heard that one in a long time. It is the A10 version 3.0. And it was a bundle. It comes with a processor integrated, ready to go. Also a cooling fan. And in terms of ports and features, it is retro friendly. For example, we have PS2 ports, HDMI, VGA, of course, uh, USB ports, gigabit ethernet and audio. I can see there are SATA ports and looking in the BIOS, they support IDE mode. So we should be able to install DOS and Windows 98 on this one. There are all the usual front panel headers on here. We have two memory slots. They are DDR3 and there's a PCI Express slot with 16 lanes and PCI. So we have a lot of options using various sound cards and video cards. And the idea in this video is to see what retro operating systems we can use with this device. I've got a bunch of video cards and sound cards lined up for this project. Also, we are evaluating the USB ODE project again. This is a nifty device using a Raspberry Pi, turning it into a USB CD-ROM emulator. And I've been using this to install all the operating systems in this video. I found a website online with BIOS updates and drivers, so it looked pretty good. The price was good, so I bought it. Before trying anything retro, let's start with Windows 10 because it's really easy to set up. I started with eight gigabytes of RAM. Here we can see the specifications of the APU. It's an A10 5750M. So this is a mobile APU and we have four cores. For graphics, we've got a Radeon 8650G. So this one uses the shared system memory. The performance of the APU is a little bit uh, basic. We're getting 210 in Cinebench R15 for the multi-core test and only 73 for the single core test. With games, it depends on how old they are. For example, this is Far Cry 2 720p, very high details, around 40 FPS. Better is Dead Space 1080p, we're getting around 30 to 40 FPS. So to improve the performance, we can of course upgrade the graphics card. This is the number one option to get more performance out of this system under Windows 10. I chose the NVIDIA GDX 1050. So this is a version from Dell, dual slot, and runs really cool and quiet, doesn't require external power. And straight away, we're getting much better performance. Far Cry 2 now running at 1080p between 60 and 70 FPS. And also Dead Space now around 90 FPS, much more beautiful. Also beautiful is ordering PCBs from our channel sponsor, PCBWay. It's your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards, manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and much more. Check the video description for links and more information. Next up is Windows XP, also very easy to install. All the drivers are available on the website. 3 Mark. we've got 2001 SE, 28,773. In 03, I got 22,011 and in 05, I got 11,937. That looks pretty good, but in games, if you're running something more demanding like Far Cry, here we have the game running at 10, 24 by 7, 68 with very high details. It struggles outside, sometimes dipping into the tens even. Less demanding games like Painkiller runs much better, around 100 FPS at 1080p with all the details. To get a much better Windows XP machine, we can upgrade the expansion cards, starting with the video card. There are many options. I really like the GeForce 9800 GT. I've got personal font memories of the 8800 GT and the 90. 800 GT is just a slightly newer version. It has one gigabyte of VRAM. This one does require external power and it does a solid job under Windows XP. I also upgraded the sound. We have a Sound Blaster X5. This is the extreme music version. Let's have a look at Far Cry. Look at that. It runs much, much better now. So by upgrading the sound card and the video card, you can turn this into a really solid Windows XP retro gaming PC. For Windows 98, I downgraded the RAM to one gigabyte. Out of the box, no expansion cards with the onboard graphics and sound. Here we are on the desktop, but of course there are no drivers. So we have a few options. We've got PCI Express, 16 lanes and a PCI slot. 
to play with. Today we're going with a PCI Express video card from NVIDIA. It is the GeForce 6600 GT. This is a beautiful model from Gigabyte. Passively cooled, no fan required. Doesn't require external power. It has DVI and VGA out, even SLI if that's something you want to do, but not supported under Windows 98. And for sound, I'm going with the Creative Labs Sound Blaster Audigy 2 ZS. This is a beautiful sound card. One of my favorites, I would say this is number one or number two uh, sound card you can choose for Windows 98. I tried a bunch of drivers and I'm planning on doing a follow-up video, checking out this video card in more detail under Windows 98. Here we have some benchmarks, 3 Mark 99 Max, 23,476. And in 3D Mark 2000, we're getting 25,466. So that's off to a good start. Storage performance is also excellent. So the AMD SATA controllers are doing a good job over 300 megabytes per second writing. I ran the system through all my usual time demo benchmarks. Here we have GL Quake, amazing performance. Same goes for Quake 2 and here we have Quake 3. Even at 1280 by 1024, we're getting 340.8 FPS. Expendable over 200 FPS and in Draken, doesn't matter what resolution, you will get at least 160 FPS. And finally for MS-DOS, first I removed all the expansion cards. Let's start with just the onboard stuff, which is the Radeon graphics and the good old PC speaker. Performance is amazing. I ran a few benchmarks, PC player, 320 by 200, almost 1000 FPS. That is beautiful. And even at 640 by 480, we're getting almost, uh, well, over 200 FPS in the PC player benchmark and in Quake, almost 100 FPS. The AMD APU is supported by SetMul, so we can disable the CPU cache, slow it down, 27.5. That's on the level of a 486. I tried a few games. They're running here in the background. Games like Gods, Space Quest 2, Stunts, Wolfenstein 3D and the heart of China. So that's all looking good, but I really want Sound Blaster sound. So I tried a bunch of sound cards. For example, this one here with the C Media chip. Uh, another one we're using in this video is this one here from ESS with the Solo One chip. And I'm also using a bunch of cards from Creative Labs, including the ODG and the Sound Blaster emulation project. Unfortunately, I had no luck, nothing panned out, which was really weird. All the driver initializations worked fine. Address 220, DMA1, interrupt five, no errors. I can see uh, TDMA mode supported and so on. Nothing worked. Even the Sound Blaster emulation project is letting us down today. Well, well, that was quite the adventure trying to get all these retro operating systems going on this motherboard. Soyo, well, I really haven't heard this name in ages. It's a Frankenstein motherboard with a mobile APU installed integrated graphics, and it's got enough legacy features to get us going. Windows 10 was a walk in the park. You might have to upgrade the video card because the integrated one is a little bit on the weak side. Performance was fine, but for a truly amazing Windows XP retro gaming PC, you want to upgrade the video card and definitely have a nice sound blaster for that EAX accelerated 3D audio. Now, Windows 98, that's where things became more interesting. The performance was fantastic. Installation can be a bit of a challenge uh, usually, but Windows 98 quick install has some patches included for large amounts of RAM and large amounts of storage. And this really helped out here. Out of the box, no accelerated graphics, no audio. So you have to use the PCI and the PCI Express slot. I was very surprised by how well the G4 6600 GT performed, not just in terms of performance, which was outstanding, but compatibility. I, I was really surprised. I never considered a uh, PCI graphics card from NVIDIA to just work like it did in this video. So I definitely want to follow up with a dedicated video checking out this card in more detail. Under MS-DOS, things started off promising with terrific performance at VGA or SVGA. I mean, almost 1000 FPS in the PC player benchmark. That is outstanding and it handles Quake at 640 by 480 also 
beautifully. We could use the USB ODE with a, a storage driver to use a USB optical drive under DOS install games, so that also worked really fine. And we can disable the CPU cache to turn this into the equivalent of a 486. Unfortunately, with the sound, we couldn't get more going than the PC speaker. None of the sound cards would work in Sound Blaster emulation mode, and also the SB emulator project didn't work out for me. And I tried a bunch of sound cards, MS-DOS and FreeDOS, just no success at all. If you do have any suggestions, maybe there's one of you out there that has this motherboard and tried to run MS-DOS. I don't believe so, but who knows, you never know. So guys, should you rush out and buy this motherboard? Absolutely not. There are lots of uh, cheap motherboards out there that are modern and that can be used for retro gaming. This was more an opportunistic buy. The price was good. I wanted to make a fun video and also get experience under my belt installing Windows 98 and DOS on something else, something other than Intel. We did a lot of stuff on the slot one and the socket 775, but we haven't done anything with AMD APUs yet. Um, some of the interesting aspects is the HDMI out under DOS did really, really well. Uh, it uses a resolution of 1280 by 960, very sharp scaling, ATI is known for that. And I was surprised that gods didn't have any scrolling issues either. So there you go, that was my review on the Soyo A10 motherboard with uh, an APU from AMD, a mobile APU, and we checked out a bunch of retro operating systems and investigated the compatibility. And now I wanna hear from you, what is your take on this? Any feedback, anything you learned, or um, is everything I'm showing in these videos already something you are aware of? I hope you found it interesting. I actually learned something about the GeForce 6600 GT, so I can't wait to put that one through its paces in a future video. And as always, if you have any suggestions and comments, leave them down below. I always enjoy reading your comments. And that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. And I shall see you soon with another one.